G'day! In today's video I've got an Acer Nitro 5, 11th gen. Not too sure of the specs or the exact model number, being that on this model the sticker is completely worn off. To butt in with past me, here we go, we are an Acer Nitro AN 515-58. Currently with the BIOS version, V1.13. To begin with, I'm going to take out the Phillips screws. Hopefully, the mounting points for these aren't broken. And along the way, I'll let you know if any of these screws are different. So far, so good. Do we have a broken speaker cover over this side? I do suspect that this bottom is going to break as it does feel rather brittle right now. Okay. Now if I pull the back. And good luck. There we go. And we are in. Now we do have one expandable NVMe over here. I am looking for signs of liquid damage or water damage. Then this one doesn't want to turn on right now. It's a unique little twist. There is a screw down the bottom over here. A little RAM cover. Now I want to disconnect the battery to begin with before I go too far. There we go. One battery disconnected. What is it looking for on here? Charging port, right here. This looks to be a little bit damaged to me. I'm curious to see what RAM it is. I'm just going to pull these tabs out. It pops up, flip it over. We have 16 gig of piece of DDR4, 3200 megahertz. There you guys go. Which basically, it's running in single channel. To get better performance, dual channel would have been preferred, so either two eighths or add another 16 gig here. What have we got here? We have a Micron 512 gig NVMe and a Wi-Fi card, which is a killer 1650i or an Intel AX201 NGW, all of which would be upgradable and replaceable. So in there you could potentially change Wi-Fi, upgrade your storage, add more RAM, add extra storage. Now, now I've just given that a bit of a dust blowout and another thing to note if you do damage your charging port it is going to be an absolute pain that will need to be unsoldered and resoldered or the whole board removed to be able to get that off would not be a pleasant job whatsoever so please don't avoid damaging that I mean, even though I've swapped the RAM into a different slot it's really not going to make no difference on performance but definitely add another stick if you do have the option of the same size. Now my cameras are starting to go flat, so I'm just going to hook up a, some power source to it while I'm talking. But also, yeah, hooking up, having both your RAM slots filled with the same size RAM will make it running dual channel mode. If you're running in dual channel mode, you will be able to get about an extra, probably anywhere from about I've just given this a bit of a dust blowout. Definitely needed it. Some of it's a bit of a smoker's tar, so it's not really leaving. But yeah, definitely if you have only a single stick of RAM in here, definitely occupy the other slot with another eight, gig, or another eight or 16 gig to get that extra dual channel performance. Some games you may net a 5% improvement. Some games you may net up, up to like 20% improvement. To install the RAM itself, basically we pull these two bits out to uninstall the RAM, we pull these out, that lifts up. Do take note of this notch here. We put it in on a slight angle and pull down. So if I push this here to here, like that, and now if I just push down, that's installed. You don't need to go into the BIOS or anything. It's just done. Also, if you do install a NVMe SSD over here, one thing you will need to do is go into disk management and format that drive 
once you've gone into Windows or else you won't be able to utilize it. Now I'm gonna connect the battery back up. Should be able to line this up. It would be easier with the battery completely removed. I'm just trying to be lazy and cheap. There we go. It's reconnected now. Push that down, push that down. Now with the RAM as well, there's these little metal barbs that are sticking out. This slots into that. If I line it up just right, I should be able to get it on one side. If I get it at the top as well, I should just be able to push down. Actually, I cheated as well. I didn't take out the screw down here. Unscrew that. Push down, and then put that screw back in. That'll be the RAM cover, or shield, put back in. Okay, battery reconnected, cover back on. Pretty much right to seal this one up. The original reason why I opened this was it was brought in dead and not booting. I found that when I swapped the RAM into the other slot, it was able to wake up, including disconnecting the battery. Before that, it would not actually power. They did lose the charger, and had used, used a different charger on there. But with the correct charger on there, we seem to be pretty all right. So I should be able to pinch around it, and work my way around. And it's a matter of putting those screws back in. Anyway, I hope that's helped you with your upgrade. And I'm going to catch you guys later. As all these screws are identical in length, there's not much point showing that. So I'm going to see you later for now. I'm going to do them off camera, and I'll catch you. Bye.